Lord tonight. Welcome to Okoy Church of God for our Wednesday night service. We be expecting the Lord for great things tonight. God is a good God. He's good all the time. And all the time, God is good. Amen. Let us stand and invite the Lord's presence into the house tonight. Hallelujah. Father God, in the name of Jesus, Lord, we thank you. We praise you. We love you. We adore you tonight. We thank you for the opportunity to come before your presence again, before your throne. We ask that your Holy Ghost would outpour upon us tonight. We ask, Lord, that your Holy Ghost would pour out upon us tonight. We need your touch. We need your anointing. In everything we do tonight, I pray that you touch the youth tonight. Touch the boys club and the girls club tonight. Lord, I just pray that you bless them tonight. Father, Lord, bless the song service and the praise team as they sing tonight. Father, Lord, we pray that you just lift us up into the heavenlies tonight, Lord. We pray, Lord, that thy perfect will would be done tonight, Lord, that you would stir our hearts, and, Lord, that you would stir our lives today, Lord, and we give you the praise and the glory, Lord. In Jesus' wonderful name we pray, amen. Let's remain standing and let's just worship the Lord tonight. Hallelujah. He is a mighty God. God, we serve. 
He truly is awesome and mighty and all loving. Hallelujah. He is amazing in his house tonight. Give him praise. Give him praise. Brazen altar, Lord, I want to see your face. Pass me by the crowds of people and priests to sing their praise. I'm hungry and thirst for your righteousness, but it's only found one place. Take me into the holy of holies. Take me in the of the Lamb. Take me into the holy of holies. Take the cold, touch my lips. Here I am. Take me into the holy of holies. Take me in by the blood of the Lamb. Lord, I want to see your face. Pass me by the crowds of people and priests to sing their praise. I hunger and thirst for your righteousness, but it's only found one place. Take me into the holy of holies. Take me in by the blood of the Lamb. be seated. Hallelujah. You want to welcome you again to our Wednesday night service here at Okoy Church of God. We're glad to have each and every one of you here tonight. 
I want to make a couple real quick announcements, if we may. Don't forget, tomorrow night is our uh, middle school, high school awards banquet. It will be tomorrow night. Uh, awards banquet will begin at 7 o'clock. So uh, all of those who want to come and be a part of that, uh, it will be our uh, middle school, high school, 6th grade through 12th grade. Amen. We want to go ahead and receive our evening offering tonight. If our uh, junior ushers and our junior praise team and all would come on up tonight. We've got all girls, huh? No boys involved at all tonight. Amen. Let us pray. Father God, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for the opportunity we have to receive your offering tonight. We have to give unto you. We pray that you bless the tithes and offering, Lord. I pray that you bless it richly and abundantly. Bless those that give and bless those that have to give, Lord. I just pray that you bless each and every one tonight and use it for your glory and your honor, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. Wonderful, wonderful, Jesus is to me. He's my counselor, prince of peace, mighty God is he. Saving me, keeping me from all sin and shame. Wonderful is my redeemer, praise his name. Wonderful, wonderful, Jesus is to me. He's my counselor, prince of peace. Mighty God is He, saving me, keeping me from all sin and shame. Wonderful is my Redeemer, praise His name. Wonderful, wonderful, Jesus is to me. He's my Counselor, Prince of Peace. Mighty God is He, saving me, keeping me from all sin and shame. Wonderful is my Redeemer, praise His name. Wonderful, wonderful, Jesus is to me. He's my Counselor, Prince of Peace, mighty God is He. Saving me, keeping me from all sin and shame. Wonderful is my Redeemer, praise His name. Praise the Lord. Amen. The youth and the boys club and the girls club can be dismissed for class. Let's give our youth and our kids a hand as they go out tonight. A whole bunch of them. <laughs> go to the Lord in prayer tonight for our prayer request tonight uh, let's we well, need to remember Miss Shannon tonight she had to be rushed to the emergency room this morning before school so uh, let's just remember her in prayer I think she was having some issues with her blood pressure and with her blood sugar so I haven't heard anything today since then so let's just remember sister Shannon in prayer amen any others today that we need to remember on this side Her back. Okay. Okay. Let's remember. Let's remember this request. Amen. Any others on this side? Let's remember Sister Lily in prayer. Yes. Amen. Any others on this side? How about on this left side over here? Your right side. <laughs>
the Lord. Praise the Lord. Okay. Amen. Praise the Lord for this praise report. Amen. Yeah, Christy's niece is going in. 18 month old is going for a, a test tomorrow. And need to pray that everything will come out good. So if it doesn't come out right, they will have to do some kind of surgery. So let's just remember remember her in prayer. The Lord's able to take care of it and, and work it out. Her parents need the Lord. And the Lord's able to touch a baby to where they can see the Lord's work and Lord and their action and their heart and their life. They need the Lord, and we need to pray that the Lord will work in this family. Amen. Any others today that we need to remember? Anyone on the stage? Teresa? Remember Rex? Okay. Your brother? Okay. Remember all of our unsaved loved ones and sinners. Amen. Any unspoken requests by raising of hand? Amen. Let us just stand and take these knees to the Lord in prayer if we may tonight. Father, Lord, we thank you, Lord, that you said where two or three are gathered together, you shall be in the midst of them. Father, Lord, there's nothing impossible for you. You're able to meet each one of these needs today. We pray for Sister Shannon, Lord. Father, Lord, as she had been taken to the hospital today, Lord. Father, Lord, you see the problems with her blood pressure and her blood sugar, Lord. Father, Lord, whatever the problem is, you're able to let your healing power to flow. Let your healing power to flow through her body, Lord. Heal her and touch her, Lord. Father, Lord, in the name of Jesus, Lord, we pray for Billy's mom that's supposed to have uh, go to the doctor and see about a fracture on her back, Lord. Father, Lord, you're able to let your healing power to flow. You're able to heal this fraction. But, Lord, you said by your stripes we are healed. We speak healing into this back, complete healing. Father, Lord, we thank you for this praise report that Robin had mentioned, Lord. Father, Lord, that you provided this miracle, Lord, that you provided a way for this medication to be provided. And, Lord, we thank you that the infection is gone in his body, Lord. Father, Lord, we pray for his friend, Lord. We know that up in Minnesota, Lord, the devil's trying to destroy and trying to attack, Lord. But, Lord, you're able to heal her and touch her, Lord. Father, Lord, we pray for baby Lexi, Lord, as she goes for these tests tomorrow. Father, Lord, we believe in you for a good report. Every problem she's having in her throat, Lord, and swallowing and eating, Lord, you're able to heal this problem. You're able to touch it, Lord. You said by your stripes we are healed. Heal and touch, Lord. Father, Lord, we pray for Brother Rex, Lord. We pray that you would let your healing power to flow through his knees, Lord, in every part of his body. In the name of Jesus, we pray for Brother Walcott's brothers, Lord. We pray, Lord, that you get a hold of their hearts and get a hold of their lives, Lord. We pray for sinners, Lord. We pray for unsaved loved ones. We pray for the lost. We send the Holy Ghost, a hound of heaven out upon each and every one of them tonight. And, Lord, we pray that you convict them of their sins and deal with their hearts and deal with their lives. Father, Lord, you see every hand that was raised, every special and spoken request. Lord, you know every need. And, Lord, you know every situation. Father, Lord, in the name of Jesus, intervene and touch them. Father God, we just thank you and we praise you tonight. We love you tonight. You are worthy to be praised. We were worthy to be worshipped and adored tonight. We thank you, Lord. We thank you for hearing our prayers. We thank you for answering them, Lord. We thank you for the good reports that we're going to hear, Lord. Father, Lord, and we give you the thanks and the praise and the glory, Lord. Father God, in Jesus' wonderful name we pray. Amen. Hallelujah. 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 Amen. You may be seated. Amen. If you have your Bibles today, let's go to the book of Acts, if we may. The book of Acts in the New Testament, Acts of the Apostles. 
or it's also referred to as acts of the Holy Spirit. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Acts chapter 17. Acts chapter 17. Let us pray. Father God, in the name of Jesus, we pray tonight that you'd anoint your word, that you let it be sharper and powerful than a two-edged sword. Lord, let it acclaim, Lord, the purpose you would have it to claim. I pray tonight that you'd anoint me tonight. Give me the touch that makes preaching easy. Lord, just let me to be a willing and obedient vessel for your Holy Spirit to flow through, that you may speak through me, that you may use me tonight. Lord, anoint our hearts and anoint our lives. Let us to receive everything that you would have us to receive tonight. And Father God, we give you the praise and the glory, Lord. In Jesus' wonderful name we pray. Amen. You can stand, if you like, for the reading of the Word. Acts chapter 17, verse number 22. Then Paul stood in the midst of Mars' hills and said, Ye of men of Athens, I perceive that in all things you are too superstitious. For, I, for as I have passed by and beheld your devotions, I found an altar with this inscription, To the unknown God. Whom therefore you ignorantly worship, him declare I unto you. God that made the world and all things therein, seeing that he is Lord of heaven and earth, dwelleth not in temples made with hands. Neither is worshipped with man's hands as though he needed anything, seeing that he giveth to all life and breath and all things. And hath made of one blood all nations of men for to dwell on all the face of the earth and have to determine the times before appointed and the bounds of their habitation. That they should seek the Lord if happily they might feel after him and find him though he be not far from every one of us. For in him we live and move and have our being. As certain also of our own poets have said, for we also are his offspring. For as much then as we are the offspring of God, we ought not to think that the Godhead is likened to gold or silver or stone, graven by art and man's devices. And the times of this ignorance God winked at, but now commandeth all men everywhere to repent. Because he hath appointed a day in the world in the which he will judge the world in righteousness by that man whom he hath ordained, whereof he hath given assurance unto all men, in that he hath raised him from the dead. And when they heard of the resurrection of the dead, some mocked. And others said, We will hear thee again on this matter. So Paul departed from among them. How bit certain men clave unto him and believed uh, among the which was Dionysus, the Areopagite, and a woman named Damaris, and others with them. Amen. You may be seated. I want to talk to you a few minutes tonight about what are you moved by tonight? What are you moved by? Or what is moving you? Last week we looked at a word, very simple word that says way. We stirred about you, what way are you in? Or what way are you walking in? It? And we just used a kind of a word play of, on the word of play. And today we want to kind of do the same thing tonight with the word move. And as we read the scriptures today, we see that Paul has given his message on Mars Hill. And he's given this message. He was going through and this time and going through this city. And he's seen uh, uh, all of these idols. And he's seen this one idol and found an inscription upon it that said, To the unknown God. This disturbed Paul when he seen it. It disturbed him. And he said, uh, These people don't know that there is a God. 
have an idol there and it said to the unknown God and it disturbed him and it, 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 it raised him so he, he preached this message to them about the unknown God. And he says, Whom therefore you ignorantly worship, him I declare upon you. He says, You worship this God ignorantly that you say is an unknown God. He said, but I want to talk to you about this God and let you know that this God is not an unknown God. He's the one that made the heavens and the earth. He's the one that created ill things. He's the one that did all of these things. God hath made all of this world and he has made all the things therein. Seeing that he is the Lord of heaven and earth, he dwelleth not in temples made with your hands. He says, you can make all the idols you want out of gold and silver and wood and, and, and fall down and worship him, but that is not what God is. He said, there is, there is a God and he can be known. He is not an unknown God. He is a God that can be worshipped and he's the one that created all things and he's the one that created us. He's the one. If you read the scriptures here and, and, and let's look, he said, he said, Neither is worship with man's hands, as though he needeth anything, seeing he giveth to all life and breath in all things. He said, God doesn't need us. He don't need us. He don't need our hands. He don't need anything. But he desires for us to worship him and to praise him. It's God. And listen to this, what he says. As I was reading this, it says, uh, As though he needeth anything, seeing he giveth to all life, and to all he giveth breath and all things. If it were not for God, for this unknown God that you're talking about, we would not be here today. God's the one that created us. He's the one that breathed into us the breath of life, and he gave us. John, uh, John 1, verse 4 says, In him was life, and in life was the life of men. It's talking about Jesus Christ. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was God, and the Word was with God. And we know that Jesus was in the beginning, and Jesus was the life giver. And it says, in him was life, and that life was the light of men. He said, I want to tell you about this tonight. This God that you're talking about. His name is Jesus, and he gives us all life and breath and all things. I want you to know tonight, where would we be tonight without God? Where would we be tonight without God, without having breath in our body, to having strength that we can go to work, having a, a brain that we can go to school and get an education, and we can have smarts, and we can do all these things. It's all through Jesus Christ. It's to this unknown God that you say you serve. Our God is not an unknown God. It's through Him we have, we have all life, and breath and all things. And as you read a little bit farther down there, then it goes on to say in verse 27 that they should seek the Lord if happily they might feel after him and find him though he be not far from every one of you. He said, you make all these gods, you make all of these idols, and you think that he's an unknown God. But I said, I'm telling you, he's the one that gives you breath. He's the one that gives you life. He's the one that gives you being. He's the one that gives you everything. And he says, in him, he said, you can search him, and you can find him. He is not far from any one of us tonight. He is close. The Bible says that he's a friend to stick up closer to a brother. He is there in our hearts and he is there in our lives and he is close by the only thing we have to do is search after him and seek him with our whole heart and our whole heart and I was reading this today sometimes you just read and the Bible's fascinating every time you read it you've seen something you've never seen before doesn't matter how many times you read that scripture that's the thing about God's word it's the living word of God and what you're going through in your heart and what you're going through in your life as you read the Word of God, He'll reveal things to you in the Word of God that you've never seen before. What an unknown God we serve. One that created all of this, 
one that breathes into men the breath of life and breathes into the word of God so that no matter what situation we near in in our heart we can open the word and the Holy Spirit will bring the word of God life into him that we should seek the Lord if happily they might feel after him and find him you notice the word there it said that they should seek the Lord if happily it's not sad if happily they might feel after him and find him though he be not far from every one of them what he was telling them people is this God that you say is an unknown God he can be worshipped you can seek after him you can find him He's close to you. All you have to do is seek after Him. All you have to do is look after Him. He is not far from you. All you have to do is seek after Him and you shall find Him. Verse 28 says, For in Him we live. If it were not for God, where would we be today? If it were not for Him, we wouldn't have life. When God created man, He created Adam and Eve in the garden. He created them out of the dust of the earth. But after He created from Him, from the dust of the earth, nothing happened. All it was was a little thing there made out of dust and earth, like a doll. He was not alive. What did He have to do to make Him alive? It says that He breathed into Him the breath of life. If it were not for God breathing into us the breath of life, man would not have ever existed. It would have been just a doll, just a dummy there, just laying there just like any other doll, not having no form, not having no God commonliness, not having anything else just dead. But in Christ Jesus, he says, for in him we live. God love created us and he made a way possible that we can worship him and praise him. We can have life and we can have it more abundantly through Jesus Christ. No matter what we look after tonight, no matter what we see chapter tonight, no, none of it can bring life except Jesus Christ. Drugs cannot bring life. Alcohol cannot bring life. Money cannot bring life. The things of this world cannot bring life. But Jesus Christ brings life. And this is the message that we were telling the idols, telling them that worship an unknown God. This is an unknown God. The only thing you have to do is seek after Him, for He is near to you. And He says, Seek Him, for in Him we live. We live. And move. And move. And move. In Him we have life. In Him we live. But aren't you glad that He made a way for us to move? He gave us feet that we can walk. He gave us hands that we can move. He gave us a neck that we can move our head around. He gave us all of these things that we can move. But what was the reason He gave this thing for us to do that we can move it for? That we would seek after Him. That we would worship Him. That we would praise Him. Our heads was created to lift up our hands and worship Him. Our praise Him. Our feet was to shed. To, was to be able to tell others about the love of Jesus Christ to a lost and dying world. That we might move. It says in Him we live in him we move in him we have our being what is your being the soul it's through him we have this everything we need is in God everything we need is through him and this is the message that Paul was telling them that they have idols made up to an old old God the God we serve is not an unknown God. He can be found. He can be, he can be heard. He, he, he can speak to our hearts. He can speak to our lives. He can move upon our hearts. He can move upon our lives. And I was reading this and studying this. It just stirred my heart and stirred my life. In Him we live and move and have our being. I want to look at this word move for a few minutes. Can I ask you a question today? What is moving you today? What moves you in your heart? 
What moves you in your life? God desires that we would be moved by Him. That would He would be what moves us. He desires that we be filled with His Spirit, that we be endued with power from on high so that the things that moves us it's the things from on high that the Holy Ghost would move us, that the Holy Ghost would stir us, that the Holy Ghost would speak to our heart, that we'd be led by the Spirit, that we would walk in the Spirit, that we would do these things that we do not fulfill the lust of the flesh. What is moving you today? Do, when we go in our society, when we go on our job, when we drive the car down the road, when we... Do we let things in the atmosphere move us? You say, Pastor Rick, what are you talking about? The Lord's been dealing with me about this, uh, stirring my heart and about stirring my life. He said, Rick, what are you letting move you? He says, I want to be the one moving you. In me, in him, we live and move and have our being. God desires for our actions and everything we do to be the result of Him and not from things of this world or things that happen in our life or things that happen but we live in and trust in and move in by the Holy Spirit. Let the Holy Spirit lead us and let the Holy Spirit guide us and let the Holy Spirit direct us. Let me tell you what I'm talking about and try to explain this to you. Are we letting things of this world move us when we go down the road we're driving down the road when we get to the red light and it's red and it turns green do we hope the horn and say hey go get out of the way I gotta get to where I'm going are we letting the red light and the people around us because they're not going are they letting it move us or when we go to the grocery store and the person behind you pushes a buggy and, and it runs against you and bumps you and you say, you turn around and you say, hey, what did you hit me for? Why are you pushing against that bumper against me? And the Lord was telling me and speaking to me, he said, Rick, we need to let the Holy Ghost be what moves us. We need to let God be moves us and we need to be so full of the Holy Ghost and let the Holy Ghost stir our heart and let the Holy Ghost stir our life so that we could change the atmosphere. You notice he said in Him we live and in Him He gives us life that we might be the light of the world. God desires for us to be moved by Him. So that when we come into an atmosphere, when we come into a situation, that we won't be moved by the atmosphere, that we would move the atmosphere. That we would change the situation. It should be our God's desires for not the atmosphere to change us or move us, but for us to move the atmosphere. For us to change the situation that we're in. And God's been dealing with me. He said, Rick, you don't need to let things happen to affect you. Maybe you get a, an a argument with someone at work or you get in a disagreement or someone comes up and, uh, and does something to make you mad. God's been dealing with me. He said, Rick, we need to be so in tune with God and so it breathed by God and let Him in, in live and move and have our being that we don't let things change us, but we change the atmosphere. So we shouldn't let situations at school or situations at work change us because your co-workers are cussing and, and storming and brewing and they're doing what they do we need to let the love of Jesus Christ shine in our heart and our life that we change the atmosphere that we change it in him we live and move and have our being example of this is Paul and, and, and if you could read it on in Acts chapter 20 we see let's go ahead and go there Acts chapter 20 Acts chapter 20, verse 24. Listen to what Paul says again. This is Paul's writing again. Verse 22. And now behold, I go bound in the Spirit unto Jerusalem, not knowing the things that shall befall me there. 
Say that the Holy Ghost witnessed in every city, saying the bonds and afflictions abide me. But none of these things move me. Neither can I my life dear unto myself so that I might finish my course with joy and the ministry which I have received of the Lord Jesus to testify the gospel of the grace of God. Paul was going to go to Jerusalem. And when he got to Jerusalem, he would probably be put into jail. He would probably have things like this happen to him. But Paul said, none of these things move me. When you look at the life of Paul, you see that Paul went through shipwreck. He was beaten. He was put in jail. He did all of these things. But Paul says that none of these things move me. None of these things affect my relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ. None of these things will change what God did in my heart and God did in my life. None of these things will change because what he was going back to is what he was preaching on Mars Hill. He says, in him, in Jesus, in God, the unknown God that they worshiped and prayed. He says, in him we live and move and have our being. And what Paul was saying, no matter what I had to face for the cause, of Jesus Christ it does not move me it does not faze me it does not affect me in our hearts and our lives we need commitment we need a determination we need a stronghold that says no matter what I have to go through the cause of Jesus Christ what I have to go through this life it will not deter my relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ it will not deter this goal that I'm looking for to see Jesus Christ to get up into heaven and walk down the pearly coast Paul says none of these things shall move me and keep me from what God has called me to do in our hearts and our lives we say we need this in our hearts say None of these things move me. When you read Paul and you read his writings, you read the things that he went through. Paul says, he said, I determined that I will run this race, that I will finish this course, that I will endure to the end. And tonight what we need to do, tonight we are in the last days. There's perilous times all around us. There's difficult times all around us. There's trouble ahead. Persecution ahead. We've got to have a determination in our life and in our heart that we are bound in Jesus Christ. It's in Him that we live. It's in Him that we move. And it's in Him that we have our being. No matter if ISIS comes in through the doors and threatens to drop our heads off or threaten to kill us, no matter if a gangster comes in telling us if you don't believe in the Lord Jesus Christ, if you don't announce it, we're going to shoot you. We must have a determination in our heart that none of these things is going to move me. This is what the Lord's been stirring my heart and stirring our life. I said, Rick, you don't know what lies ahead. You must know your relationship in the Lord Jesus Christ. You must know that you're rooted and grounded in the Lord Jesus Christ. That no matter we have obstacles in our heart, we have situations in our life, we're not always on the mountaintop experience. Sometimes we're in the valley. Sometimes we had to go through the fire. Sometimes we had to go through difficulties. But we must have a determination in our heart, in our life, and know who our Savior is. Know where our strength comes from. Know that it's through Jesus Christ. It's in Him that we live. It's in Him that we move. And it's in him we have our being we must be rooted and grounded in God's word we must be rooted and grounded in God and know that the blood of Jesus Christ is our salvation know that the death and burial and the resurrection and blood of Jesus Christ is our source and not let nothing move you or phase you Sometimes situations around you, the way other people are talking, 
Maybe someone's in a bad attitude that you're sitting at the table with. If you're not careful, that bad attitude will get on you. That bad attitude will get on you. And that's what we must do in our hearts and our lives. That we don't let bad attitudes, we don't let situations move us. But we let the Holy Spirit lead us and guide us and direct us. And we be led. We be full of the Spirit. We be endued with power from on high. I'm going to tell you a story. True story. It happened with me and Christy just the other day. She got something in the mail. A bill. And she went in orbit about it. It was I couldn't believe how much it was. How could it be that much? She went on and raved about it and raved about it and raved about it. I sat there and listened and listened. You know what? Eventually I let that get on me. And I was raving back at her. I said, why do I know what that is for? What is the reason for that? What is that? I don't know. We need to just forget about it. And before I know it, we were both up in there. We were both having a fit. And the Lord dealt with me. He said, Rick, why did you let her move you? Why did you let that atmosphere move you? He says, in Jesus Christ, we don't need to let things move us. We don't need to let atmosphere move you or let situations move you. But you need to move the situation. That's not what I'm talking about. It's very contagious. We need to be very careful. And we need to be very careful that we say, Lord, let that not move me. Let that not be affect me. That's what the Lord's been dealing with me about. He said, Rick, don't let things move you. Don't let things change you. Don't let situation motivate you. Motivate you. And, and it's cool atmosphere. Sometimes the students are talking and jumping and up and down. And you tell them to sit down and don't listen. They do all these things and before you know it, you say, I said for you to sit down and shut up. <laughs> you know, but we, we don't need to let things like that affect us. We need to affect them. And sometimes you just have to holler at them kids and say, hey, I'm talking to you. <laughs> but we must be careful that we don't let every atmosphere change us. Do you understand what I'm trying to say? Do you understand, or has the Lord just been dealing with me about this and this message is just for me? If it is, I say, Lord, eat me up with it because I need more of your presence. I need more of you. I'm tired of being affected by everything. When you're at the red light and the person behind you honks at you, the thing I want to do, I just want to sit there a little longer. <laughs> just sit there a little longer. Say, what are they honking about? But if you're not careful, you're blessing that person out. Don't let things move you. It's in Him we live and move and have our being. Paul says, none of these things that I go through. Paul was beaten. Paul was persecuted. Paul was all of these things. He was put in jail and all of these things. Paul says, none of these things move me. Why? Because if you look in the Greek and you look up this definition to this word move that Paul was using there, it goes back to God's words, God's commandments, what God speaks. And what he's going back to is going back to Mars Hill, that message that he preached and said, God is the answer. You can seek Him. You can find Him. Paul got blinded. He got stirred. We talked last week that he was on the way to kill all the Christians and God got a hold of his heart and got a hold of his life. But what Paul is trying to let us know is, hey, this God that created everything, 
Thee's God to breathe into us the breath of life. Deep with God is in we live and move and have our being. If we, if we trust in God and believe in God and know what our foundation is in, I know in whom I believed in and I'm persuaded that neither death nor height nor any other thing shall be able to separate me from the love of God. That's what we need in our hearts and our lives. That's what we need. The Lord's been stirring me and speaking with me on this a long time. Say so it's, it's new. Don't be moved by things. Don't be moved by things. Don't let things move you, Rick. Don't let things move you. And this is what the Lord spoke to me. He said, in everything that Paul went through, he said, none of these things move me. It doesn't matter how rude your waitress is or how rude the cashier is. We just have to let the love of Jesus Christ shine through them, through us, that they may see Jesus. Paul said, as he was looking, he, none of these things moved me. I was telling you the definition was the things that God spoke, His Word, His life. All the things he spoke all of this into existence. What Paul was trying to let us know is it's all about what God did for us all the way back in the beginning. God spoke everything into existence. Why? Hurricanes, tornadoes, earthquakes, no matter what happens in our lives, it should not move us. It should not affect our relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ. It should not inflect our walk with the Lord Jesus Christ. There's nothing in our heart or nothing in our life that should ever make us want to give up on the Lord Jesus Christ. There's nothing that should make us backslide. And this is what Paul is saying. Because of this unknown God that we worship because we praise because he can be found because of that if you seek after him and you find him when you find him you don't want to ever get lost from him that's what Paul was saying once he got a hold of me blinded me by the light when I thought I was doing everything right what happened he got a hold of my heart he got a hold of my life he turned me around and he put me on the right track. And what happened? God put it in him. God stirred it in him in such of a way that no matter what hell he went through, no matter what persecution he went through, no matter what he faced, he said, none of these things will move me. And in our hearts and our life, these last days this is what's going to have to make us make it in the end perilous times is coming what is your relationship what are you rooted in what are you grounded in what moves you what moves your attitude what moves your atmosphere what moves? Is the things of this world moving you? Or is the Lord Jesus Christ moving you? In Him we live. In Him we move. And in Him we have our being. Last week we looked at the way. Are you in the way? Or are you on the way? Today I want to tell you, now that you're in the way, and Jesus is your way, are you letting things move you? What's moving you? What's changing your attitude? What's changing your atmosphere? We need our relationship with in such of a way that we change the atmosphere. The atmosphere doesn't change you. All sinners around us are lost and die and they live in darkness. When we go into the room, the light 
should shine. It said in John 1, 4, In him was life, and that life was the light of man. What does God desire for us to be? That when we get into relationship, when we get into a situation that should move us, we don't let it move us, but we move it. We change the atmosphere. We turn the light on. They're in darkness, but we let them know, hey, let the light shine. Let the light shine. Sister Wendy, can you come? What's moving you today? What's moving you? The Lord's been dealing with me this for a long time. I said, Rick, you need a relationship. You need a thing with me so that things doesn't change you. Things doesn't move you. But you move the things. In Him, we live. In Him, we move. And in Him, we have our being. There's a little song that I want to read to you today. It's in your hymn book. There's one last week that went along with my message last week. I didn't think about it until Brother Rogers told me it was, I'm in the way, Glory Land way. But there's also a song in the song book that says, Glory, hallelujah, I shall not be moved. Anchored in Jehovah, I shall not be moved. Just like a tree that's planted by the waters, I shall not be moved. In His love abiding, I shall not be moved. And in Him confiding, I shall not be moved. Just like a tree that's planted by the waters, I shall not be moved. Though all hell assail me, I shall not be moved. Jesus will not fail me, I shall not be moved. Just like a tree that's planted by the waters, I shall not be moved. Though the tempest rages, I shall not be moved. Home the rock of ages, I shall not be moved. Just like a tree that's planted by the waters. Oh, I shall not be moved. Sing it with me. Oh, I shall not be, I shall not be moved. I shall not be, I shall not be moved. Just like a tree that's planted by the waters. I shall not be moved. Verse 1. Oh, glory, hallelujah, I shall not be moved. Anchored in Jehovah, I shall not be moved. Just like a tree that's planted by the waters, I shall not be moved. I shall not be, I shall not be moved. I shall not be, I shall not be moved, just like a tree that's planted by the waters. I shall not be moved in its love abiding. I shall not be moved and in him confided i shall not be moved just like a tree that's planted by the waters i shall not be moved i shall not i shall not be moved i shall not be i shall not be moved just like a tree that's planted by the waters I shall not be moved although all hell assail me I shall not be moved Jesus will not fail me I shall not be moved just like a tree that's planted by the waters I shall not be moved I shall not be, I shall not be moved. 
I shall not be, I shall not be moved just like a tree that's planted by the waters. I shall not be moved. The last verse of Though the tempest rages, I shall not be moved. On the rock of ages, I shall not be moved. Just like a tree that's planted by the waters, I shall not be moved. I shall not be, I shall not be moved. I shall not be I shall not be moved just like a tree that's planted by the waters. I shall not be moved. How do we go by not being moved? The Lord's been showing me and dealing with me. He says, Rick, you need to get full of the Holy Ghost. Let the Holy Ghost lead you. Let the Holy Ghost guide you. Let the Holy Spirit says, be filled with the Spirit. And you shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. We need to be so and grounded in the Word of God. Be on the rock Jesus Christ. And be so full of the Holy Ghost. That the Holy Ghost helps us and strengthens us. Can we find a place of prayer tonight and come spend some time around the altars tonight? Hallelujah. We
There's another song I want to read to you. It said, When pegs of death seize on my soul, and to the Lord I cried, till Jesus came and made me home, I would not be denied. As Jacob in the days of old, I wrestled with the Lord. An instant with a courage bold, I stood upon his word. Old Satan said my Lord was gone and would not hear my prayer. But praise the Lord, the work is done and Christ the Lord is here. I would not be denied. I would not be denied. Till Jesus came and made me whole, I would not be denied. We're rooted and grounded in the Word of God. And we know what we trust in and know what we believe in. And we're full of the Holy Ghost. We let the Holy Spirit lead us and guide us and direct us. And we walk in the Spirit. Then none of these things will move me. Amen. God bless you. Don't forget uh, uh, Sunday services. Um, Sunday school, 1045. Is that right? 10 o'clock. <laughs> Morning worship is 1045. And Sunday night is 6 o'clock. Tomorrow night is high school, middle school uh, award ceremony at 7 o'clock. Pray that you have a blessed week, rest of the week, and we'll see you. Uh, if we don't see you tomorrow night, we'll see you on Sunday. Remember, one thing I always told them at my church is, remember, go with God, and I can guarantee you that he'll go with you. God bless you.